A small strip of land gives Bosnia-Herzegovina access to the Adriatic Sea. Now, that coastline is on the verge of an effective blockade. Neighboring Croatia is constructing a massive bridge to join its mainland with its southern territory. The project, dubbed as the Peljeschatz Bridge, is a prerequisite for Croatia to enter the borderless Schengen area. In doing so, however, the Croatian project risks undermining Bosnia's tiny coastline. Meanwhile, the European Union is less methodical about it, Brussels is eager to seal the deal and has provided funding for the Croatian bridge. But just as things couldn't get any more obscure, the tender was commissioned to a Chinese state-owned company. Backdoor deals are usually made in poorly lit rooms, and the Peljeschitz project is one that could effectively blockade Bosnia's access to the sea, with some politicians saying that the country is on the verge of becoming landlocked. I'm your host Shirvan and welcome to Caspian Report. Today's video is sponsored by Blinkist. With everyone being busier than ever, it seems like there is hardly enough time to spend learning. Blinkist is an app that takes the highlights from non-fiction books and condenses it to 15 minutes, which you can either read or listen to. They have a huge library, including items that we have reviewed in the past, like The Silk Roads, How Democracies Die, The Rational Optimist, Why Nations Fail, The Accidental Superpower, and so on. Using Blinkist, you can go over the highlights of each title in a podcast style, so if you're short on time, this is the best technique to hone your knowledge. The first 100 people to go to Blinkist.com slash Caspian Report are going to get unlimited access for one week to try out. You'll also get 25% off if you want a full membership. So move fast and grab one of those political history books. With its rugged mountains and lush valleys dotted with charming towns, the Balkan Peninsula has seen all sorts of empires come and go. The ethno-religious diversity characterizing the region has often led to violence, conflict and disagreements. In the Western Balkans, the collapse of Yugoslavia was followed by severe hostility among Bosniaks, Serbs and Croats. That conflict ended only after NATO intervention. In 1995, the Dayton Accords put an end to the violence, but it resulted in a complex political arrangement. Croatia inherited the archipelago along the eastern coast of the Adriatic Sea, a place dotted with small islands, shores, towns, etc., making Croatia a hotspot for tourism. However, its Dubrovnik region in the south was separated from the mainland to the north. Cutting in between was the coastline of Bosnia-Herzegovina. The small strip of land known as the Neom Corridor gave Sarajevo access to the Adriatic Sea. Now most people assume that the corridor is a modern byproduct of the Yugoslav Wars, but this isn't so. The formation of the Neom Corridor goes back to the 17th century. At the time, the Ottomans were at conflict with the Venetians, and the Principality of Ragusa, which is the historical name of the Dubrovnik region, voluntarily ceded strips of land to its north to the Ottomans. The intent was to create a buffer between Venetia and Ragusa. Later, as the Ottomans retreated from the Balkans, the Neom Corridor was passed down to the Austrian Empire and then to Yugoslavia. Though none of these historical entities exist today, their political conspiracies still demarcate the Neom shoreline. When Yugoslavia collapsed in the 1990s, the coastline became part of Bosnia-Herzegovina, bringing us to the current state of affairs. For Bosnia, the Neom Corridor is a strategic asset. Though its length is only 20 kilometers, Neom allows Bosnia to strike deals that it could not otherwise. It granted Sarajevo geopolitical flexibility, a rare commodity in the Balkans. Currently, Neom is only a small town of roughly 5,000 inhabitants. Its small fishing port is not suitable for bulk cargo, which is why Bosnia uses the Croatian seaport of Ploče as its main anchorage for exports and imports. That said, Bosnian policymakers have long-term plans to expand the port in Neom into a fully operational seaport capable of handling millions of tons of bulk cargo. 
Doing so would grant Bosnia a greater say in its foreign policy. It would no longer depend on Croatian ports for its maritime access. For Croatia, the story is different. Neom is seen as a barrier to commerce, tourism and transportation. Passing through the corridor is not easy. Travelers must first exit Croatia, then enter and exit Bosnia before re-entering Croatia. There are four border checkpoints in a space of 20 kilometers. Under normal circumstances, the highway going through Neom would take no more than 15 minutes to traverse. And before Croatia joined the European Union, the border checks were more relaxed. With the involvement of Brussels, however, checkpoint regulations have become more strict. Traffic is particularly congested during the high season when thousands of tourists headed for Dubrovnik spend hours queuing between the Croatian-Bosnian border checks. So while the Neom corridor holds geopolitical and geoeconomic potential for Bosnia, it has been a source of commercial agony for Croatia. As a result, Zagreb has sought for ways to physically combine its territory and avoid the Bosnian corridor. A breakthrough was made in 1998 when Croatia and Bosnia-Herzegovina agreed to a maritime border. The pact, known as the Neom Agreement, was to grant free passages to Croatian transit traffic between its separated territories through Bosnian territory. By 2012, the deal had been fully augmented and its provisions covered a range of topics including license plates, documents, accidents, etc. But right around the time, two things happened that changed the terms and conditions and left the Neom agreement on ice. First, Croatia joined the European Union. What was earlier a bilateral agreement became subject to multilateral discussion bearing the obligations of the Schengen area in mind. Second, while the negotiations were ongoing, Zagreb decided to go ahead regardless and drafted a blueprint to connect its territory. That draft was the Peljašac project, a massive bridge with a length of 2.4 kilometers and the height of 55 meters. It was a landmark infrastructure plan. Upon completion, it would rank as the second longest bridge in Europe. The Peljašac bridge would bring territorial cohesion to Croatia and make the country eligible to join the Schengen area. At the same time, it would improve the flow of goods and people and strengthen the overall economic conditions. Even though the Neom agreement was never ratified, Croatia gave the Peljašac project the go-ahead in 2007. Then, just as construction was to commence, the financial crisis hit. Much like the rest of Eastern Europe, Croatia was hurt badly. Construction on the Peljašac bridge froze and the situation remained as such for the next decade. In 2017, with the aid of the European Union, the plan was revived. Croatia obtained about 85% of the funding for the Peljašac project from the EU and the much-delayed bridge was back on track. The government in Sarajevo, however, was less cheerful. Bosnian lawmakers opposed the project, claiming that Croatia will inadvertently blockade Bosnia's access to the sea, thereby discouraging trade, commerce and investments in the vicinity of Neo. Whether this is true is unknown. No studies have been conducted on this issue, but it stands to reason that Bosnia's connection to the sea will diminish while its expansion plans for Neom seaport will crumble. When the Peljašac bridge is complete, the flow of goods and people is likely to alternate, perhaps not all of it, but certainly enough to make a lasting impression. It follows that Bosnian policymakers are upset with the Croatian bridge and consider it an assault on the sovereignty and territorial integrity of Bosnia-Herzegovina. Sarajevo says that it has the right to file a lawsuit against Croatia at the International Tribunal for the Law of the Sea. Zagreb, meanwhile, argues that the Peljašic bridge does not violate international law and that the construction applies the highest professional criteria. More specifically, the Croatians claim that the bridge's 55-meter height is sufficient to allow safe passage into Neom. 
the law of the sea convention is somewhat ambiguous on the issue. While certain provisions call for archipelago states to designate sea lanes for the safe passage of ships, the criteria is ambiguous. As a rule of thumb, the dimensions of the Golden Gate Bridge, whose clearance above high water averages 67 meters, is usually applied when it comes to such constructions. The Pelyashats Bridge is 12 meters short of that, so the dispute is not so much about the construction as its design. Now, technically, Bosnia could file a lawsuit, but the trouble is that there is no political unity on the matter, a flaw that is part of the character of Sarajevo. You see, at the federal level, the Bosnian constitution recognizes three constituent groups, Bosniaks, Serbs and Croats. All three factions are represented in the country's political structures, and the communities share power through a rotating presidency. Maintaining this arrangement is key to Bosnia's stability. So while Bosniak politicians insist that the Croatian bridge is an attack on state sovereignty, Bosnian Croats, who account for 98% of the population in Neom, do not see anything provocative. At the same time, Bosnian Serbs feel indifferent to the whole dispute. This then explains Bosnia's inert attitude and its inability to mobilize against the Pelyashats project. Still interesting, the controversy surrounding the bridge goes beyond Bosnia. Although the European Union finances the project, the construction is being built by the China Road and Bridge Corporation, a Chinese state-owned company. This makes the Pelyashats project the first EU-funded venture built by a Chinese company. Brussels picked Beijing because it was cheaper, but China's motive to partake in this infrastructure endeavor relates to the Belt and Road Initiative. In a place as the Balkans, with its crumbling infrastructure, Chinese companies are involved in dozens of ventures, such as motorways in Montenegro, a steel factory in Serbia, and coal power plants in Bosnia-Herzegovina, etc. These projects benefit the local nations, but they also grant China influence vis-a-vis -vis its relationship with the European Union. Taken together, there is little Bosnia can do to halt or redesign the Pelyashats bridge. The combined interests of the European Union and China outweigh the capacities of Bosnia. Plus, Croatia's needs are just as valid as Bosnia's anxieties so the situation will likely agitate considering its history. And in the Balkans that typically leads to trouble, for history always manages to get in the way of progress. I've been your host Chirvan from Caspian Report. If you enjoy our content please remember to hit the like button, comment and subscribe. Also click the links below, doing so helps support our content making. Thank you for watching and Saul. So